Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the middle of the week. I appreciate so much you making Bible Tract Echoes a part of your day. Now, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, if at all possible, get your own copy of God's Word and turn there and join me. I'm going to read verses 3 and 4. 2 Peter and chapter 1. If you can also have pen and paper ready for taking some notes, I really do work hard to try to make each the Bible passages every day very clear and usable. And I think you taking some notes will aid you in putting your teaching time or our teaching time into action. And you may even have the opportunity to share what you learn with somebody else along the way today. Second Peter chapter one, I've got a gospel tract here in my hand. A gospel tract, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I haven't said this in a while, I don't think, but this radio program, Bible Tract Echoes, is the radio arm of a larger ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated. Now, we publish gospel tracts in different languages, and we give them away all over the world. For 80 years, we've been giving things away all over the world. And we have so many people, individuals and local churches, even a few businesses that that have come alongside of us and make us one of their missionaries. And in the last 14 years, I know of a half a million people at least that have come to Christ by receiving one of our gospel tracts. That's a number I can verify. This little tool called a gospel track really works. I'll tell you about one here in just a moment. Let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Have you seen those little electric cars for kids? They're really pretty neat stuff. These cars come in all kinds of shapes and styles so that they can look like small versions of the real car. And if I were a kiddo, I would love to have one. But What if I were to give an actual, real, adult car to, let's say, my nine-year-old grandson, Christopher? I give it to him and I'd say, Christopher, this car is yours. The title is in your name. And I've even paid for a year's worth of insurance on the car. Oh, my grandson, his face would just light up. But you know what he would say next, don't you? He would say, Grandpa, can I drive the car now? And my answer would be, no, I'm sorry, you can't do that. You must wait seven more years. You must be 16 years old to be able to drive the car. That's what the law says. Oh, my friend, that kind of news would just take all the starch out of my grandson's soul. Well, I say all that because today in 2 Peter, we learn that God has given to us far greater gifts than a car, gifts that allow us to participate in his very nature. And what is exciting is this, we get to drive these gifts now. We get to use them from the very first day we're born again. This is great stuff. Get your Bible, get something with which to take notes. Join me, 2 Peter. I mentioned having one of the gospel tracts in my hand here. This one's entitled, Ready to Die. Ready to Die. It's designed to have a particular impact on people that are in or have been in the military, but it's also geared to have an impact on young people, teenagers, people that are, you and I would call millennials. This young man, James Dunkley, died in the service of our country on a second tour of duty in the Middle East, but he had a powerful life testimony. When he was just 14 years old, he came up with his own life motto, ready to die, made up his own logo and everything, and he impacted so many people for Christ. This particular track will challenge a believer, 
but it also challenged a lost person to receive Christ. Just one of the tracks in a sample packet I want to give you. When my announcer at the end gives our contact information, jot it down, contact us, give us your name and address, let you and I become a partner in seeing people come to Christ. If you can't wait to the end, just go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org. Get the tracks. Order today, today, today. The Bible says this here in 2 Peter and chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 say, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through Lust. Stop right there, please. The opening four verses of Second Peter are about our salvation through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We become a child of God only because Jesus is the righteous one, and the righteous one died on our behalf. And the moment we placed our faith in him, his righteous deed on Calvary and his righteous standing before God the Father became our standing. It's called here in this passage a precious or valuable faith. Now, that's our gift. That's our new car, so to speak. But at the moment of salvation, we're called newborn babes in Christ. So we immediately get to take our salvation and we get to drive it. We get to use it. Here in verses 3 and 4, we are told about how we can enjoy our new provision, our new salvation. And before I get done here, walking through some verses of chapter 1, I'm going to give some words beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant. I'm going to give six of them all told before we're done. My outline word for verses 3 and 4, my E word is enjoy or enjoying our salvation. In verses 3 and 4, there are three key things that I want to stick into your thought life right now. These three ideas are these. Number one, the dynamic of God. Number two, the delivery from God. That is, God's going to give us some things, deliver some things to us. And then number three, the description of us who know God as our Savior. The dynamic of God, the delivery of God, and the description of us. Let's take them one at a time. First of all, the dynamic of God. It comes from verse 3. We're told there, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It was God who gave us our salvation. It is God's power that is at work in us to save us and to help us live for him. That word power here comes from the Greek word that we get our word dynamite from. Now, what's the point of all this? Friend, we got saved through God's powerful work, and we live day by day our Christian life through God's powerful help. It's God at work in us. He gets all the glory. That's number one, the dynamic of God. My, the second thing I want to put into your mind today is this, the delivery of God, the delivery of God. Again, verse 4 says, whereby, or I could write it this way, or through these things, or whereby are given unto us. The word given means God gave us. We're passive in all of this. God gave us what we need to live godly. It was given by him. We are simply the receivers. Now, every believer has been given the same identical promises so that every single believer can share in the divine nature. Now, this verse does not say, when it uses the term divine nature, that we become God. It says that we have God's life in us so that we can live the godly life. We can have that excellent moral virtue that's spoken about there at the end of verse 3. We talked about the dynamic of God. We talked about the delivery of God. Now, the description of every believer here based upon verses 3 and 4. Four things in all describe my life today. 
Not because I'm a pastor, not because I've been to Bible school, but simply because I'm a child of God. These four also describe you, dear friend, if you have been born again. What are these four things? Well, first of all, verse 3 says that we are a granted people. We are a granted people. We've all been given. The word given is used here in the passage. We've all been given the same things by God. Now, God is no respecter of persons when it comes to his salvation gifts, which enable us to live a godly life. There are differences of spiritual gifts for ministry, but when it comes to the idea of God giving us what we need to live a godly life, every single believer gets the same promises and power from God. That's number one way we're described. The second way we're described is still in verse three. It says, we are called people. We are called called. We're all called to a life of glory and virtue. Now, those two words, glory and virtue, refer to one big idea. It's moral excellence, moral excellence. All saints, all believers are called to that standard of moral excellence as we find it in the person of Jesus Christ. We're all called to that. That's our mission to become, have moral excellence in our lives. The third way we're described is found in verse four. We are partaking people, partaking people. We've been all made to be partakers of the divine nature. We all are in the fellowship or in the companionship of this divine life because of the indwelling Holy Spirit. You get the Holy Spirit the very instant you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God's seal that you have been saved by his grace and are going to be taken all the way to heaven and you become a partaker in his life. The fourth description here is found in verse four. It says that we are an escaped people. We're an escaped people. Verse four says some really cool stuff at the end. Verse four says these words, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having, that's past tense, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The word escaped is our description here, and it simply tells us what we are right now as a born again person, what we are by God's might. Yes, we are all guaranteed to a final escape out of this corrupt world, but those lustful passions we're tempted with here and now day by day are the passions we can escape from day by day. All of this is due to God's power and the promises he's made to us. As we grow in our knowledge of Christ, we grow in his power and we better grasp his promises. Growing is important. We find it here at the beginning of 2 Peter chapter 1 and we find it at the end of the very of the very book itself, chapter 3. We're told there but grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Growing is important so we can live a life of moral excellence. We're called to that. Beloved friend in Christ, let's you and I grow in grace and knowledge. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.